The old synagogue in Dubrovnik is the oldest Sephardic synagogue still in use today in the world and is the second oldest synagogue in Europe behind Prague synagogue. It is said to have been established in 1352 but gained legal status in the city in 1408. Owned by the local Jewish community, the main floor still functions as a place of worship for the High Holy Days and special occasions, but is now mainly a city museum, which features many Jewish centuries-old artifacts. Located on a steep, narrow alleyway, the synagogue is connected to a neighboring building, which has long been owned by the Tolentino family, who have been caretakers of the synagogue for centuries. Now before we see more of the synagogue, hear about the history of Sephardic Jews in Dubrovnik, and visit the museum with its centuries-old artifacts, I'd like to thank my sponsor, Adventures Croatia, for sponsoring this video and all of my Croatia videos as I travel around Croatia with them. Adventures Croatia is the leading tour operator specializing in travel to Croatia and surrounding countries. They cater to American tourists and are rated five stars on both TripAdvisor and Trustpilot. You can go to their website, adventurescroatia.com for more information. There's a link to the website in the video description. If you mention my promo code AndysAwesome10 when speaking with Adventures Croatia, you'll get 10% off any trip you book with them. The internal layout is different from other European synagogues and has undergone numerous refurbishments throughout the centuries and has a mixture of designs from different eras. The building has sustained damage several times with the Great Earthquake in 1667, World War II, and the Croatian War of Independence in the 1990s. The damage has been repaired as closely as possible to its original design. After the expulsion of Jews from Spain in 1492, many Jews from Spain and Portugal eventually settled into the independent city of Dubrovnik, where there was already a small Jewish community. Many Jews became traders and craftsmen, dealing with spices, silks, fabrics, and crafts. In 1546, Dubrovnik officials allocated a Jewish settlement within the city with the main street being called Jewish Street in the Dubrovnik ghetto. Centuries later, Jews were still persecuted in the areas around Dubrovnik under Venetian law. When Dubrovnik's economic position and power declined in the mid-18th century, Jews were prohibited from engaging in commerce and confined to the ghetto. When Dalmatia and Dubrovnik were occupied by the forces of Napoleon I in 1808, Jews attained legal equality for the first time. However, when the Austrian Empire annexed Dalmatia in 1814, legal equality was again taken away. Jews were granted legal equality under Croatian law in the mid to late 19th century. During World War II, Croatia came under the rule of fascists. Dubrovnik was occupied first by the Italian army and then by the German army. Before the Holocaust, 250 Jews lived in Dubrovnik. Many were transferred to the island of Lopid, along with other Jews from different parts of Croatia. Then in June 1943, they were transferred to the Rob concentration camp. In October 1944, Joseph Broz Tito's military entered Dubrovnik and many Jews were transferred to the freed territories. The rest were sent by the Germans to concentration camps. After the war, many of the surviving Jews settled in Israel. Today, less than 50 Jews live in Dubrovnik. During the Croatian War of Independence in the 1990s, the city was attacked by Serbian and Montenegrin forces in what has been called the Siege of Dubrovnik. Approximately two-thirds of the old city was damaged, including the synagogue. In 1992, an artillery shell went through the roof of the synagogue and many items had to be shipped elsewhere. Today, because of the small number of Jews in Dubrovnik, the synagogue does not have its own rabbi. On holy days, a visiting rabbi conducts services for the small community.